So my name is Fern. I am currently up in a Skypod, which is a platform that is suspended um, up in the air um, with lines that run down and are anchored on uh, ropes that cross and block the road. So if those were cut, my platform would fall. I came down here because um, I heard the story of Nutty and uh, Deckert, the person who's staying in the tree. And I was incredibly inspired by just the stalwartness of the folks who were uh, sitting up here and refusing to come down uh, way longer than they thought they'd be up under really uh, challenging conditions. Nutty, the monopod sitter, ran out of food on the 19th, but before that, she was eating only a tiny amount of food per day, so effectively she's been fasting much longer. I think every time one of us wanted to give up, or give in, we thought about Nutty, who wasn't giving in and didn't even have anything to eat. Um, and that definitely inspired me and pushed me forward, um, which is, I think, a really, really good thing. Um, so we wanted to set up the Skypod so that we could still hold the road, even after the monopod came down. Uh, holding the road uh, is important. Uh, what Nutty's been doing has been stopping any large equipment from coming up the road, um, anything to uh, dig trenches, lay pipeline, uh, pipeline itself, um, any of uh, the boring or drilling equipment. And it also helps protect the tree sit because uh, the sit is stopping some necessary trees from being cut, but it could potentially be extracted by large machines. Uh, sorry. The sit is stopping necessary trees in the pipeline path from being cut, but it could potentially be extracted by machines coming up the road. So that's why holding the road and holding the trees uh, seems to be important right now for holding ground and uh, blockading pipeline progress. I think that settler-led pipeline campaigns have a lot to learn from uh, campaigns that are um, indigenous-led, and part of that is not focusing on something like uh, land ownership or um, economic costs to individuals, but focusing on the value of the land and on its life-giving capacities and protecting um, the health of all wild organisms and human life. Appalachians Against Pipelines and um, this campaign specifically really do want to distance ourselves from the rhetoric of private property rights because uh, any kind of private property rights are, are definitely illegitimate on stolen land and the very idea of land ownership as we tend to think of it or um, is a, a really colonial idea that somebody could uh, buy and, and sell land and, and be able to buy the right to do whatever they wanted to based on money. Um, so uh, I think it's really wonderful that uh, anyone with a connection to the land, whether they're uh, settlers or not, fight to try to protect it. It's really critical for uh, settler-led campaigns for environmental protection to lend uh, tangible support and uh, bodies when they're invited to indigenous-led struggles and uh, protection of um, the lands of the uh, native tribes here, um, partly because of the uh, legacy of colonialism and um, the resources and, and privilege that settlers have. Um, and um, I think that a part of a, a really serious consideration of any kind of land defense is that, uh, yes, we need to protect the land, but it's not our land. I 
decided I wanted to study ecology because it's uh, what I'm most passionate about. I'm a naturalist. Um, I'm fascinated by the natural world, and I think a deep understanding of it is very important. A student at the University of Michigan right now. I'm a master's student in conservation ecology and environmental justice. I do agroecological research in Mexico, which involves climbing trees and studying the effects of canopy connectivity on arthropod communities in an agroecosystem. But my whole lab investigates agroecological methods, so what uh, biodiverse farming systems look like, how we can uh, create them and um, support them and create ways of farming that work with natural systems and uh, counter the narrative that industrial agriculture is necessary to feed the world when it actually uh, jeopardizes and eliminates our capacity to feed ourselves in the future by destroying natural systems that we rely on. I do believe that a lot of science and a lot of research that's funded by capitalist interests is more likely to serve oppressors than it is to serve the common good. I do think that uh, there is a strong need for people in the sciences who will uh, support and connect with um, grassroots organizers and uh, campaigns and be part of social movements. So I'm a part of Science for the People so that we can better integrate uh, radical folks in the sciences with uh, grassroots organizing and campaigns. I will say the Forest Service has gone to really great lengths to protect MVP and its operations. They've brought people in from uh, the uh, Forest Service personnel in from states like Louisiana and I think Utah and maybe Montana. The Forest Service is getting reimbursed for the cost of trying to remove us and trying to uh, guard any sitters and make sure that they don't get supplies because I've seen uh, this kind of private money flowing into uh, public law enforcement before in other campaigns. I've actually seen it um, happen in Texas and with Cove Point. Uh, sometimes the police force gets uh, fancy equipment from the private company. Sometimes they just get uh, basically uh, paid for overtime or, or there's a rent-a-cop system. So I think it's really horrifying to think that these kinds of services can be bought if you think about it that way, but it's also not surprising. My platform is, I'm estimating six and a half feet by three feet. So it's pretty spacious. There's room to move around, to pile different things, uh, to sleep on it comfortably. Um, I have uh, the platform suspended by four corners. The lines that cross the road are far enough from my pod that some kind of uh, cherry picker uh, could not reach all the way uh, horizontally to where I am. And um, anything in the middle can't reach me vertically. So they can't um, drive any machines close enough to me to extract me. I've got a, um, there's a banner that people set up on one side of the blockade. It said still here. And uh, the Forest Service was definitely very upset <laughs> to see that we were still here um, after I'm sure they'd been anticipating uh, having the road all to themselves in a matter of time. And the other side of my banner, uh, of my platform, has a banner that reads, which side are you on? And uh, that's, of course, a reference to uh, the song. Um, an old Union song, which is really relevant to uh, this general area of Appalachia, uh, where uh, the coal industry and uh, resistance to exploitation um, by miners organizing themselves and unionizing is uh, a really important part 
of the labor history here. I think of To Save the Landed People, the radical organization that used uh, diversity of tactics in West Virginia to um, fight strip mining uh, at its inception. And um, I think that those struggles are should be seen as the same. They're both uh, building power against exploitation and capitalist exploitation has become opponents of uh, needing to exploit natural resources or the land itself and needing to exploit people or laborers. Um, when we uh, build power as uh, workers or as just people who are protecting the land, um, we challenge that ability to ruthlessly exploit and we uh, challenge that power um, and we create um, a lot more power in communities that have the ability to protect the land that they depend on, protect their own health, protect um, everyone's safety who lives there. As far as I know, I held the record for the longest uh, single person continuous tree sit on uh, the East Coast or the Eastern United States until Nutty came along. And I am really glad she did. It was about time somebody broke the record. It's a, a reminder to other folks that there's a challenge out there for, there's a need for people who can just come and uh, stay in place for a long time and not move. Um, I think that Nutty's day should probably count double because I had a much easier place to stay and live. I think, I, I can't imagine staying in uh, on a monopod on a, a tiny cot for that long. Um, that's a lot harder than living in a tree where you can climb around and um, where you have a platform and uh, it, life's a, a lot easier in a tree, I think, than uh, on a pole. I haven't been a part of organizing with uh, this particular fight and Appalachians Against Pipelines long-term because I have been in school in Michigan, but I heard that there was a need for folks to come down here and learn their bodies and um, any abilities in support of actions, and I knew that I had some of those skills, and I wanted to respond to that call, um, and... I uh, heard about Nutty's story, so I came down and uh, helped. Uh, yeah, helped out in this way by by being the person who who climbed up in something. And we definitely need more people down here. Um, there's a huge need for uh, folks to come, whatever their um, experience level. They don't need to take a role where that's like mine, but if they want to, um, more people would definitely uh, help this fight so much, and I'm hoping that just like um, Nutty and Deckard inspired me, that um, this action continues to inspire more action.